Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head back down to Slovenia, and this is yet another beer that came through with the second coming of the Davor box. So once again, a huge thank you to Davor Shiritz for making this review possible. He's organised these Slovenian beer boxes for me and been watching the channel over the last two or three years, and it's always cool to have fans like that who are quite willing to help you get a hold of uh, these little beers from different countries. So huge thank you to Davor for uh, for making this review possible. For this one we're going to look at another Slovenian brewery who I have never tried anything from but Davor always picks out good beers for me so I'm sure this will be a pretty interesting one. We're going to go to the Savinia Valley which is of course famous for its hot production and for this one we're trying my first beer from Green Gold Brewing. So this one is the Kashmir, it's a New England IPA coming in at 6% ABV and again it should be very very nice. I had quite a good rating on Untapped when I had a little quick look earlier on and uh, I think rate beer it was rated well into the 90s too when I checked it out so very much looking forward to this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website. The link to my other reviews that I've done, uh, that I'll do in the future. My apologies from Green Gold Brewing. Very first time I'm trying one of their beers, of course. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch, or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Slovenian beers that I've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever I get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Green Gold Brewing then on to my brewery notes so Green Gold Brewing is owned by Luca Roynik whose family have been growing hops for generations on the family farm in the Savinia Valley so the farm itself has 41 acres of land and a part Apparently it's one of the largest hop farms in Europe, but it can be found out to the west of Selje, but it's part of the township Tembert Visavinsky uh, Dolini, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I do apologise for any bad Slovenian pronunciations in this video. But the family farm apparently started around 120 years ago in the 1880s, and it's produced Slovenian hop varieties such as Aurora, uh, Bobek, Salaya, Styrian Golding, Styrian Dragon, and Styrian Wolf, as well as various others. The Styrian Wolf is a beautiful hop that gives you melon flavours, and the Styrian Syrian Dragon is one that I haven't had anything with so hopefully these guys produce a nice single hop IPA with that at some point and I can uh, get a hold of that. That would be awesome. But yeah, these guys from what I understand are helping to develop a little bit um, some of the different hops as well. They're crossbreeding lots of different things too. Um, but yeah, produce, they, these guys have produced a hell of a lot of different hops. But they decided they wanted to start brewing their own beer in July of 2016. They had their premiere of the beers in uh, Sir William's pub in Ljubljana. And they started off with a very small 500 litre brewery, but they've scaled up considerably since then, getting lots of new fermentation tanks and stuff like this. And they've also installed a canning line in 2018. And at the moment, uh, as of early 2019, I'm filming this review for you in March 2019, they've produced 15 different varieties of beer. So, yeah, for a brewery that only started about two and a bit years ago, I think that is, uh, you know, pretty good going. So, and it's cool to find a hop farm actually starting up their own brewery as well. But I think it's a lot more common than you might. Uh, you might normally think. I know there's a little hop farm near uh, me here in Skåne in Sweden that have a very small brewery and they were thinking of actually opening that up to be a little bit uh, bigger actually. So it's cool to see that in a, a country that is actually quite famous for its hops, Slovenian hops are quite well respected throughout the world, albeit they're produced in a smaller volume than countries like Germany and, uh, and Czech and stuff like this, but the Slovenian hops are very well respected for their quality throughout the world. And again, as I've mentioned before, Slovenia is a wine producing country and it tends to be the case that these countries that produce wine very well, also tend to do some really good craft beers. Greece, Mark, Greece Spain, Slovenia, um, you know, Italy as well, I guess you could say, um, always tend to produce some uh, very, very good craft beers. And, you know, the common denominator there is that they're very good at wine. But yeah, that's all you really need to know about Green Gold Brewing. Uh, quite a unique story that I've had so far here on the channel, one of the more unusual 
um, one of the more unusual stories behind a brewery that I've had. So here's hoping I can review more of their beers in the future, but I have another one to review for you fairly soon. If you want to learn a little bit more about these guys, of course, you can check out the brewery website and you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and things like that, and that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on at the brewery. But anyway, on to the beer itself then. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, this one is a 6% New England IPA. It's hot with Citra and Mosaic, Aurora and Cashmere hops. So Citra and Mosaic, we all know, Citra gives you these lovely mangoey flavours with lychees and uh, lychees, gooseberries, lemon, limey kind of complexities. Mosaic is the tangerine orange hop uh, that gives you a little bit of blueberry as well, both from America. Um, Aurora is a Slovenian hop. It's kind of usually a bittering hop, but you can use it for aroma. It's known for its kind of herbal and uh, floral qualities. And of course, the cashmere is one that, as far as I can remember, I've never come across before. So I did a little bit of research on that. The cashmere is an American hop that was developed by the Washington State University. It was released back in 2013, and apparently it's a crossbreed between a uh, Cascade a northern brewer and it's supposed to give you some lovely aromas and flavours of lemon, lime and also some melon too. So I think it, this will be a very, very interesting beer. But yeah, um, let's get on to the actual tasting of this itself then. We can get rid of the brewery notes now and focus on the beer itself. I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. There you can see a uh, nice little bit of artwork on this one I have to say, it's pretty cool uh, but the artwork on their other beers as well is uh, is very very nice you can see the green gold brewing symbol there which again is pretty cool actually it's kind of, it's almost like punky, comic-y um, this artwork, I think it's, it is pretty awesome actually green gold brewing on the top of the can there as well tells you a little bit on the uh, side, this is a pale, unpasteurised un uh, and unfiltered beer 330 milliliter can and it says this one was filled on the 13th of December December 2018. So yeah, it's been in the can around you know about 10 weeks or something like that. So it still should be um, be all right actually. But yeah, very much looking forward to trying this one, uh, and we'll see how we get on. So um, yeah, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. I quite like the touch that they've got a uh, gold top on the cans too. That is pretty cool. But as soon as you open this beer up, you get some of these lovely fruity hoppy aromas coming out of the beer. Give it a little bit of an aggressive pour, and there we go. Look at that. Goes well in this nice Amar glass. So yeah, as you can see with this beer, it's poured a, poured a lovely bright yellow um, colour, this one. It's one, in terms of the New England IPAs, this is definitely one of the more yellow ones you're going to come across. There's about a half finger of a frothy, I would say, yeah, I would say perfect white head on this one. Not even a little bit creamy, mainly a perfect white head on that. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, I have to say it does look pretty damn nice. If I put my fingers behind the glass there, you can see this one is pretty hazy, which again is what you, exactly what you would expect from one of these New England IPAs. So with this beer, nothing particularly surprising about it in terms of its aroma, but you know, it, or its, its appearance, my apologies. Um, but yeah, it looks very, very nice, this one. So yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma and uh, just see how we get on with this beer. Oh, I tell you, this is really, really nice. Now, one of the things that I've always commented on when it comes to Slovenian beers, there's a bit of a trend with these. It doesn't matter what brewery you get them from. It doesn't matter, um, you know, what kind of style it, style of IPA it is, rather. Slovenian beers, in my experience, they like them to have, um, the IPAs, they like them to have a little bit of sweetness to the malt base. They like them to have a little bit of a fruity, juicy note, but they also like them to have just a little bitter kick to them as well. It doesn't matter whether it's a New England, a West Coast, or even a black IPA. You always find this with the Slovenian beers. And for me, the distinctive quality of these is the balance between the sweet malts and the uh, the juicy fruits and you can smell the sweetness in this one already from the malts and you can also smell the lovely juicy qualities um, to this beer as well so I'm really excited to try this one just on the basis of the aroma but let's um let's have a little look at that now so yeah with this beer for me you can smell there's a nice oaty creaminess to this the sweet the oats actually come across as pretty sweet in this beer and you've got a lovely bit of an almost wheaty white bread smoothness in there too lovely little bit of biscuity sweetness maybe even a little touch of a light kind of caramel um so yeah you can pick out the sweeter notes of the uh, the malt base in here and to be honest the new england characteristics in this one are leaning a little bit more towards the sweet side of things for me but yeah to me that's a really really nice smelling beer. The fruity notes in this one are also really interesting. There's a hell of a lot going on with this one 
in terms of the fruity side of things. Melon definitely jumping out, and I'm guessing that will be the cashmere. There's almost a little bit of a, a quite a bit of gooseberry coming out of this too, which is one of the complexities you'll get from uh, from citra, and you can pick out some of that lemon limey quality. But for me, the uh, the melons are really quite prominent in this one. You can also pick up a bit of the mangoes and the tangerine orange. The mangoes from the citra, of course, and the tangerine oranges are uh, are coming from the mosaic. Um, but there's a hell of a lot of juicy fruit to this one. It almost has a little bit of an apricotty note or something to it as well. So the, the it really smells like a like a fruit salad or or uh, something like that. But the aroma, the fruity side of this aroma is lovely and uh, and juicy. It does smell like you know these kind of gummy sweets or something like that. Or um, I don't know what what I can say for uh, Europeans. Maybe in uh, we always had chewits in Scotland or uh, like Malwam. Maybe that's probably one that's quite widely available. The Haribo Malwams. It has that kind of uh, almost candied fruity aroma to it. The, the way the fruity qualities come out in this beer really reminds me of Haribo Malwam actually. But yeah, take a little bit of time and just enjoy that fruity side of the beer because it's quite unique actually. And I think it works very, very well in this one. You can pick up a little bit of blueberry, I think, too, which will be from the mosaic right enough. On the green side of the hops, um, mainly it's got a nice uh, sort of grassy and herbal sort of thing. The Aurora, I think, will be the one that's giving it that slightly herbal quality that it has, and the grassiness will be coming from all of the other ones. But, you know, overall, for me, it's a, it's a very nice beer, this one, and I like what they've... Um, the, the way the aroma comes across in this is I always say take a little bit of time and just enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it but we're going to taste this one now so this one is the Cashmere a New England IPA at 6% ABV from Green Gold Brewing just outside of Celia in the Savinia Valley kind of halfway between Maribor and uh, Ljubljana actually in Slovenia once again a huge thank you to Davor Shiritz for making this beer review possible let's get stuck in Slanja, Skull, Nastravia Yeah, right, this beer for me, I'll say straight away, gets a thumbs up, it's a, it's a really good quality beer that, you know, um, in some ways I'm not surprised because you know Davor isn't going to send me a bad beer, um, but the quality of the beers that you're getting from Slovenia, I mean, there's some really good breweries out there. There's Pellets on, there's uh, Reservoir Dogs, there's Human Fish, there's Hops Brew. There's green gold. Um, I'm trying to think if I've missed any of them, but you know, there's some really good um, quality breweries out there now that are doing a lot of uh, really interesting stuff. Lobic as well are the other one that um, I've just tried recently. You know, for a country that's what about two million people, um, you know, to have you know six breweries, six seven breweries that I've tried that are all producing beers as good as this, you know, it's uh, it really is pretty special, I have to say. So is you know Slovenia, um, they're very passionate, I think, about their food and drink and stuff like that. And um, the videos that I do for the Slovenian beers always seem to get a good response. Um, but this is another quality beer, and this brewery, um, they're only about two years old, two and a half years old something like that um, but if they're producing beers like this you know there's a big future for Slovenian beers and I really do hope um, the, pro the only problem with Slovenia I guess in some ways is that it's such a small country so their production volumes I guess aren't as big as other places like Germany and Belgium and Czech and stuff like that but the quality of the beer is absolutely great but there's a number of countries you can say that for in Europe and the cool thing for me is just being able to try stuff from different places but the quality of Slovenian beer is really damn good but when they've got a history of producing hops and stuff like that it's it, you know it shouldn't be a, it shouldn't come as a surprise really but the other thing I'll say about this beer is that it does actually um, kind of fit into that um, stereotype if you like that I was talking about with these Slovenian beers so in the middle of your palate you've got this nice um, smooth, white, bready quality. You can feel some of the pale malt in this. That just blankets the middle of your palate. I think on top of that, there's a little touch of um, a wheaty smoothness, but not too much actually. And then you've got the creamy um, oaty notes um, sitting in there as well, which is really, really nice. The, the malt base on this one, um, it has an element of drinkability and crispness to it for me. Um, but that suits this beer actually. This It's one of the New England IPAs that isn't quite as thick in its mouthfeel. For me the mouthfeel is a little bit wetter and uh, more kind of crisp and drinkable if you like. So that's a nice, intra it's a nice kind of um, curved ball if you like. It's a little bit of a change of pace for the New England style. Mm. 
But yeah, it certainly works um, really nicely. In the middle of your palette, you can get a little touch of um, a biscuity sweetness in there. It's almost a little bit like a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuit, if you like. Um, just like the sort of corny syrup stuff that holds the, uh, the biscuits together. But um, yeah, the, the malt base in this one is really quite nice. As I say, a little bit different for me. It's just a little, a little bit lighter and uh, kind of crisper. I think it's maybe fair to say that this beer is one of the ones that combines the, the sort of West Coast mouthfeel with the New England kind of smoothness, if you like. I think that's probably a fair assessment of the, the malt base in this beer. But the hoppy side of things, again, is very, very nice. Back corners of the palate, you're getting a little touch of earthiness there. I'll be guessing that'll be a combination of the mosaic, because the mosaic can give you a little touch of earthiness, and it'll also be the aurora. You know, with the Slovenian hops that are a little bit lower in their alpha acid qualities, and um, the green, or even with the ones that are higher as well, the green side of the hops is actually quite similar, I find, to the German noble hops. It's got that nice um, sort of quite, li um, quite light, but very kind of um, distinctive noble hoppy quality to it but as you come further forward from the back sides of your palate you can detect there is a little bit of that herbal quality in there again which is interesting because I'm guessing that will be the aurora but as you get towards the front corners of the palate there's a nice little bit of a floral aromaticity it does have a little touch of spice to it which is kind of interesting but not um, a big spicy presence but round the front curve of the palate you've got a nice little bit of a lighter um, grassy note in there which is nice and you're getting these lemon not lemongrass but you're getting these these kind of typical grassy sort of notes out of it which is really good but yeah I really like what they've um, what they've, they've pulled off with this beer but the focus on this one of course is on the fruity side of things if you just go behind the front curve of the palate you've got that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters start to come out of the beer and for me that's where this brew really kind of shines quite a lot there's a hell of a lot going on in this one so um, let's, let's just start from the back then that little oily bubble as I always say at the back of that you can get a little tiny touch of uh, grapefruit in there it's, there, but it's, it's very minimal actually there is a little tiny bit of grapefruit in there grapefruit of course is a very distinctive darker flavour but then when you come immediately in front of that there's lovely juicy melons a little bit further and forward of that you've got a nice kind of um, mango we know in there and then just toward it with mixing in with the mangoes you can pick out the melons the melons which are from the, the cashmere hops in this one really start to push their way out a little bit more the further into the aftertaste you go and kind of just if you just go inside from the very kind of edge of your tongue that's where the lemon limey flavors are uh, are kind of lingering from the cashmere as well and I guess the citra can give you these lemon limey notes um, and they're sort of amplifying that effect if you like so the citra is um it's quite a good hop actually to to use as a complement to the cashmere but I'd love to try a single hop cashmere beer and just uh, and see how we get on with that because when it's mixed in with these hops they complement it well and the whole beer just goes together. I mean, this is one of these beers, again, where I would say, and I think I've said this about a good few of the Slovenian IPAs, that they're very good at blending flavours together in Slovenia. I think they're, they're really quite well versed at that. So, yeah, with this beer, um, it really has a nice kind of different blend of, it really has a, a nice blend of the different fruity qualities that you'd expect. It works very, very well. Maybe on the very tip of your palate, there's a little touch of blueberry, which is one of the subtleties, the subtle kind of complexities you can get from um, Mosaic too. But um, the, the fruity, the, the, the key noting, noteworthy thing of this beer is the way all these different fruits go together. I mean, you've got a little touch of grapefruit, mangoes, um, the sort of more tangerine oranges, uh, melon definitely in there, lemon limes, little bit of a um, little touch of blueberry as well. Like I was saying, there's a hell of a lot going on in this one. And the beer, you know, it doesn't. This beer, it doesn't feel as if it's crowded or anything like that. With all these complexities, sometimes the beers can be a little touch crowded, but this one pulls it off um, really quite nicely. So you know, take your hat off to these guys. They've pulled off a really damn good um, New England IPA here. Apparently, they also have a West Coast IPA which uses three different varieties of Slovenian hops. I think it's the Styrian Wolf, the Styrian Dragon, and um, the Aurora that they're using in that. I think that would be a very interesting beer to try at some point. But um, yeah, they've done a, a, a damn good job of this one and uh, they get a big thumbs up from me. I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this one again and uh, I think you guys who are New England fans would certainly not be disappointed with uh, with this beer either. Uh, in terms of the mouthfeel then, this is where this beer gets a little bit different I think. 
So for me, the mouthfeel is kind of mid-bodied, the carbonation is very smooth, both things that you would expect of the beer, um, but it's a slightly more oily New England IPA, this one, for me. Yeah, I mean, it has a little element of the creaminess to it, which obviously brings out the OT flavours in the beer. Um, but it, it does have a little, there is a little touch of an almost kind of slightly crisp quality to this one. It just feels a little bit more, it's got a little bit of that West Coast um, element to the beer as well, which is really nice. The, the, the mouthfeel is somewhere between the, it's more on the oily side for the New England side of things, and it has a little bit of that slightly um, wetter quality that you would expect as well. So I really, um, I, I do like the way this one comes across. It's got a really nice drinkability to it. In terms of IBUs, I'd guess this one's somewhere around the 35 uh, IBU mark, something like that. By no means is this beer going to blow the head off you in terms of its bitterness. Um, nice smoothness and also a slight sweetness in the malt base. I think this one gets a little bit sweeter the further you go into the aftertaste in terms of its malt base and you get a little bit more juicy with the fruits as well. And again, it fits that stereotype. You've got a little bit of sweetness in the malt base, but a lovely big oily juicy fruity note out of this one. That kind of happens, as I've mentioned, with pretty much all the Slovenian IPAs that I've tried. And it must just be the way they like them. But to be honest, I pretty w I really quite like it as well. So again, this beer gets a big thumbs up from me. The Cashmere New England IPA from Green Gold Brewing. The thing that really sticks out to me about this one both is the mouthfeel and also the way these kind of fruity qualities go together. The Cashmere, obviously, a very very interesting hop. The melony flavours and the lemon limes and the mangoes and everything. The way that these fruity complexities just mix together is um, is really quite nice. So have a go at this beer for yourself and just see what you think. But I think this is a pretty um, damn good beer. So big thumbs up to Green Gold Brew and I'm really curious to try the uh, the Oil Wars Imperial Stout that I have now as well. So yeah, um, once again a huge thank you to Davor for providing this beer for me. I hope you guys watching have enjoyed this beer review. Thank you again for watching. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Green Gold Brewing. Do let me know some other Slovenian breweries that you'd like me to have a look at as well. Uh, and thank you again for uh, for all your support on the channel in Slovenia. It really is cool to try beers from the, from Slovenia because they're, they're pretty damn good, I have to say. But thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. Make sure you try check out my social media. Make sure you have a look at some of these Green Gold Brewing beers and I look forward to trying more from these guys in the future. Until the next time, it's Lange just now and I'll catch you guys very soon. I really lovely and quite unique fruity New England IP here. Slanja, Skull, Nastravia.